Brilliant. Okay. Well, um, well, I'll I'll kick off. Um, the uh, topic of today's um, uh, webinar is um, basically delivering sustained cost savings through effective submetering. Um, we just before we, we go into that, the um, kind of format today is I'm going to be doing a bit of talking, um, and then I'll 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 uh, hand over to um, uh, Andrew Wright from Tulip um, to talk about his experiences as well. Um, so I'm uh, Andy Todd. I work for um, a company called Erco. We are the uh, energy um, climate change consultancy, and covering kind of three core areas of policy, energy resource management, and project development and investment. Um, I'm after the industrial energy management team, um, whose basically their, their core focus is to support both multi-site organisations. Uh, to manage their energy, water, and resource consumption. Um, just a quick introduction. Uh, the contents of kind of today's webinar is, is a benefits of some key benefits of submetering, uh, how to approach a metering or site metering strategy, um, some considerations for uh, meter selection, um, again, some considerations for data collection, uh, what to look for in reporting, and then, as I said, we'll move on to a case study from, from Tulip. So, uh, so moving on to the key benefits of, of submetering. Um, Build them down into five key benefits. Um, they're, they're, they're probably more associated ones, but um, just for, for introduction, um, the first is improved engagement and awareness. And what I mean, there's, there's been lots spoken on this in the past, and things like Hawthorne effect, and but just kind of uh, monitoring or, or metering um, a consumption and reporting that um, metering uh, or, or that consumption. Um, and can lead to kind of quite a dramatic improvement. Um, what, what that graph there next to us shows is um, it was on a crate washing machine. Um, just when, when we installed the a water meter, um, it very quickly um, uh, and, and the users were able to um, and what they were consuming, they then started understanding actually, well, it's overflowing all the time. Actually, we could probably um, change this around, and, and they really started bringing their kind of process under control. And that was just through a very simple meter and the reporting of that consumption to them. So there's no point just having metering; it's about consumption. The next of the benefits that I'm going to go through is the is really to identify key opportunities and analyze processes, um, such as um, being able to give you some deep profile analysis. Yep, if the quality has improved, I've just changed the handset. Um, so um, what, what being have a higher integral of data will give you is things like um, peak consumptions, you can compare base loads, um, you can compare similar non-production periods. So it, gives you, it unlocks um, a list of uh, more operational um, uh, opportunities, which you're, you're quite frankly, if you're just metering weekly or, or, or just using your monthly bills, you're, you're never going to be able to get into that detail. And these can lead to some quite significant savings, uh, sometimes in... in, in, in uh, to four percent of kind of site consumption, you can get through these kind of process optimization opportunities. A key opportunity or key fit of submetering is the ability to kind of drive competition through benchmarking or um, identify opportunity areas through kind of um, tracking similar processes such as. Um, refrigeration. So if you've got a, uh, sites doing similar things, you can say how much refrigeration they use or how much electricity they use on refrigeration per ton or, 
or what, whatever the metric is. And you can, you can start kind of driving competition between sites, and that tends to drive the right kind of operational behavior if, if you get kind of key buy-in. One is a quick identification of performance. So this is all about kind of if you if you you've got a well maintained site, is it's keeping it that way. So um, here's an example of um, a site where this shows kind of the electricity consumption of three different air compressors, um, and uh, just at the start of that that first kind of arrow, um, that's when um, a fault developed with one of the compressors, which basically uh, I think there's a split in the diaphragm or something, which um, generally made an extra compressor have to run. Um, because we had this metering, or because this site had this metering, it was very quick to identify. Um, they could order a replacement part, and it was it was um, uh, fixed and returned to normal operation quite in, in a timely way. Um, and this is something that really uh, kind of submetering is an, it's another benefit of submetering, which again is, is, is difficult to quantify up front, but kind of um, uh, loss avoidance is is a, is a key thing. And really is, is once you've kind of put in a, uh, an improvement project, you can actually quantify savings that you've made and, and you can ensure that you continue to um, save um, and, and look in that kind of improved performance. Um, and this shows um, a, a site which installed some variable speed drives on, a, um, on some pumps, on some chiller pumps, and, um, or chilled water pumps, and uh, the line is the new saving, and the red line was the expected uh, consumption, and then we, we can see the saving quite easily. So it, it's that kind of analysis, and, and it, it, it's something that um, there's sometimes a lot of scepticism around, oh, will this actually save this? Um, you can easily prove it when, you, when you've got a, a, a decent level of submetering. So that, that's just gone through some of the kind of key benefits. Um, I'm, I'm now going to move on to kind of where best to base um, meters. Um, Metering is, is normally quite, can be quite costly, um, and the approach to meter everything or every single user and all that all those kind of um, kind of blanket uh, approaches is is not quite cost prohibitive. Um, uh, and what what you can do is overwhelm um, a site or, or users with with too much information and, and then really using it. Um, so what what we tend, uh, tend to advocate is is to kind of large, maybe consuming areas, um, and so large individual consumers. But basically, it's, it's what do you think um, would have a, a decent potential for, or high potential for, for improvement. Um, so, so in this particular example, you might not be able to quite see the, the detail, but we've taken a, a, a um, couple of press areas as, as a blanket, so we can see the profile at, at weekends, etc. Um, but they've also gone down to a per line on a pack packaging uh, line or, or individual compressors because we feel that there's, there might be the most the highest potential for improvement. So it, it, it's taking a um, kind of a, a approach where we think um, we consider not only the kind of quantity it uses but also the, the kind of potential there is for saving. Um, it's really important basically for any kind of meter or, 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 or what you're you put in is it's for outset you need to either have a KPI or a report or understand who's actually going to look at this data who's going to own that data um, otherwise it will find that it just it just doesn't get used as, as effectively as you'd hope some some going to move on to some um, uh, selection meter selection considerations so this is when you're kind of choosing the metering and um, and, and what what questions you might want to ask yourself so a big one is what, what information do I, I really need? What am I going to use? Um, uh, for example, in, in electricity meters, do, do I want just kilowatt hours as a total uh, unit, or do I want to know amps by days, or do I want the whole kind of power quality information? If so, that's going to steer you in one way. Um, if, and one would be, for, for instance, in, in water application, um, do I need an instantaneous flow or... or, or um, and, and we go down like a process mag flow meter or, or, or for that kind of quality meter or with simple turbine meter so if I just want a meter cubed output those kind of things and they obviously have quite a big impact to the cost um, so, um, another one is is there a similar way or another way I can get similar information um, uh, something uh, an example of this would be could I use a hot water meter instead of a more expensive steam meter in a certain application 
um, bearing in mind there there's kind of multiples and difference in the cost. Um, could I use virtual meters? So by virtual meters, I, can I subtract uh, one meter point from another meter point to work out the consumption of something else, or, or do I need uh, uh, additional meters? So this is all about just trying to make your money go as far as possible. So another thing is installation requirements. Have they been considered? So things like um, split core CTs, they might reduce, inst and, uh, reduce the installation time, or is there actually physically enough space um, to install meters? Uh, and what, what, what are the access requirements? How am I going to be able to get um, to the metering point at the time I need to, or do I need to kind of plan a shutdown? And all these kind of um, accessibility issues um, that really can slow up uh, metering installation projects um, significantly. So you've got your, your metering side, and then the next side is, is very much um, on, on the data collection. Um, what, what, what do we need here? Um, again, and it's really what, what is fit for purpose again. And it's, it's really easy to spend a lot of money um, on something that can give you absolutely kind of every configuration you want. Um, but you really need to ask yourself, what, what interval of data do I require? Um, do I need instantaneous and, or one minute? It's like a PLC or SCADA application or, or will 15 minutely hourly, daily? What, what, what is best? And obviously the cost um, can uh, will, will change depending on, on what you need. What, what signals need to be picked up? Are they analog, digital temperatures, all this kind of stuff? That, that, will, take, that will kind of inform um, what kind of hardware you'll, you'll need on site. Why wireless? This is a question that I get asked lots, and it, it isn't really, there isn't one kind of answer to this. It's, it's, it, it, it depends on the number of meters, how close they are together. Um, what the existing site infrastructure um, is, are there existing cable routes, are, um, are there a lot of isolated water meters a long way from anywhere, all these kind of things. And, and, and sometimes wireless is better, sometimes a combination is better, sometimes wired is better, but it really depends on uh, those kind of um, location and existing site infrastructure is, is an in, important factor there. One thing that I really kind of I'd for anyone who's looking into kind of um, deploying submetering at a site is really understand how how easy um, and costly it it may be to scale up a, a selected system. Um, you, you you don't want to be tied into something that's very difficult to to expand. Um, we, really, we we uh, we find that um, for most um, of our clients, a phased it's it's, it's only a phased approach. Um, so they they they. Uh, spend the amount to start with, demonstrate the kind of approach and um, savings, and then move on to kind of uh, deploying more submetering in, in more areas where they think that there's further potential. Um, it, if, if not easy and cheap to fill up, then you're, you're, you're going to be um, creating problems further down the line. Um, where's the data going? I mean, that's that's another kind of key thing. Is is it is it going to a web-based platform? Is it going to be stored on site? Um, what 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 kind of um, uh, provisions do I need to make for that? And what's important area is obviously reporting. So um, one one thing that uh, or a common pitfall is to install lots and lots of meters and very high interval data um, without. Um, making the kind of adequate provision for kind of um, porting or um, turning that kind of data into, into information. Um, so it always needs to be considered as a tool rather than a, a, a like a solution to something. Um, we want to look out who's going to use it. What what kind of porting lines on site is this is, is this going to go down? Are we going to get the process leads at each department or whatever? Are they going to be responsible? for um, performance of their area? Is that going to be worked into their KPIs? Um, do a, a package that can do all the analysis and generate reports and targets, etc. Or can I can I use a spreadsheet? Um, both, both forms, depending on the complexity, um, you can you can use both. Um, and and it's really uh, the important thing is to kind of it, it, it supports um, management process and. Um, Management needs kind of effective people, a clear lines of communication and accountability, and, and that, that's kind of now moving more onto the energy management side um, 
of, of Turing, but but that you, you can't really have one without the other to, to, to kind of um, uh, generate any kind of savings. Um, so next to this, there's a few types of reports. Um, so there's kind of like various kind of red, amber, green reports. These are types of reports that we sometimes use with our with our with our clients. Um, and, and types of matrix reports, all this kind of stuff. If you want to combine, uh, compare site by site, or um, if, if you want something more visual, so it's just the types of outputs that you might want to think about when you're um, trying to design a system. So that very kind of um, brief overview uh, of of what is a very kind of complex topic, but it's 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 kind of very introductory. I've now thought it would be um, good to pass it over to um, Andrew Wright, who's uh, the energy manager for Tulip, to um, talk through kind of experiences of of of, of the system. Is Drew on the line? Better? That's better. <laughs> you don't sound terribly convinced, Andy. Can you? Um, yes, yes, yes. You can. Wonderful news. Okay. Wonderful news. In that case, I'll um, I'll kick off. Um, so yeah, I'm. I work for Tulip. We are part of the Danish Crown Group. Um, we're leading food producer in the UK. We supply uh, a wide range of both um, fresh um, cooked pork products. Um, and we've got 16 manufacturing facilities in the UK and employ around 8,000 people. Um, I suppose to this, we've got a, a fairly strong, or I'd like to consider a strong sustainability program in place, of which one strand is obviously um, utility management. And since final year 10, 11, um, we've had group-wide reduction targets in place on energy, um, so electricity and fuel, of a 15% reduction target and a 20% reduction target on water. So what we'll do is um, share a little story, I suppose, with you on what we've done to date with regards to monitoring and targeting. So it started four years ago with the rollout of Verco's carbon desktop system. Uh, it's basically just a lot of screenshots that you're looking at. It's uh, an internet-based system for collating uh, this data. Um, we use that as a centralized platform to collect data across all sites. Before that, we were using all sorts of different systems, a lot of Excel spreadsheets, um, a lot of different types of uh, systems. So this was one centralized platform that everybody um, needed to use. This pretty much began as a manual system requiring um, me reading inputs um, from all of the sites effectively on key parameters, electricity, fuel, and water. I use that information to start with to simply inform on the board on um, on progress around the sites, and it helped us generate a monthly KPI report. From this beginning, um, we built on the uh, the manual system uh, data entry, and we piloted automatic data collection um, through a system of submeters at a couple of key sites, and we used that information to help demonstrate that savings were possible, um, and then hopefully build up from that base. In terms of what we did, we mainly used um, wireless air transmitters to collect the data, and a lot of the information is available in 15-minute intervals, so you're getting quite um, detailed analysis of what's going on on site. And we built on the monitoring network as time's gone on, so um, the level of submetering over different sites has increased. So rather than simply main incomers, so total site electricity, on many sites will now have a very detailed breakdown of, of submetering across the different sites. I've been pretty successful um, to date. So the majority of our savings have been delivered through no and low cost projects as a result of simply monitoring what we're doing. So to date, we've made an energy improvement of 8.3% against base and a water improvement of 13.2% against base. Um, how we've done that, I suppose, is through numerous methods. I've mentioned no and low-cost projects, but we implement that 
um, through benchmarking our site. So the reporting gives us um, really good analysis of how the individual sites are performing, and we benchmark them and league table them and um, analyze their performance. We set up what we call energy cluster working groups, which are effectively gatherings of key stakeholders on each site to discuss best practice um, and picks that should be implemented on site to help deliver savings. And um, also ensured that every site has um, an energy champion. Um, this this is a dedicated role, and it, it, we've specified that it must be an engineer who is an energy champion on site, and we've given them training in typical kind of opportunities that they should be looking to develop on site, and also training in the system and the software that sits behind it. The overview um, give you a couple of examples of of ones to date as a result of having the monitoring data. So in at the top, um, there's a good example of a refreshing opportunity. This site had, at uh, the beginning of the graph, you can see three compressors serving their low temperature refrigeration circuit. The original operation was to try and perform most of the blast freezing at night in order to take advantage of the lower night tariff. And this resulted in three compressors running part loaded at night and two compressors running partly loaded during the day. Um, but having the data on each of the compressors, um, we were able to analyze the data. It was suggested if we smoothed out the cooling demand, then two compressors could run um, at a high loading day and night, resulting in a significant increase in efficiency. The increase is equivalent to £37,000 a year, um, even when the reduced night tariff was taken into account. So obviously a, a decent saving. In the second example, um, the side question, there is no real one project that I can tell you that has led to their reduction. It's really the effect of a, uh, a really big focus on broad-scale energy management. Uh, so the site have had a significant reduction, but no specific large impact improvement, just a host of small initiatives um, that have led to a, a massive uh, reduction really on on site usage. So the example is uh, a more recent example of a vac pump control optimization at, uh, at one of our manufacturing sites, uh, and this is a good example of a phased approach. They um, put in an electricity meter on the supply to each of the eight vacuum pumps on site. They can profile data on this, uh, and that allowed them to analyze the operation um, as an overview. So the first box kind of zooms in to show that six or seven of the pumps were all on um, all the time, with only short times when they were all off, uh, which was basically at, at weekends. So since having the data available, they've been able to try a number of different profiles and uh, set points point adjustments and uh, they now have five or six pumps during uh, production with all of them being switched off more regularly. Again this led to a significant saving of around 40% of electricity reduction which to the site was worth £22,000 a year. But again you've got to remember this is effectively no cost, this is just by analysing the data. So, are you going to take the key learnings? I can do. Oh, I, I can, do. Um, can you hear me all right? We've had some fairly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Um, so, I, I guess uh, we, we're working through with, with Andy and, and the rest of the sites. I think it's it's kind of the key learnings are really switching uh, can really unlock a large potential of opportunities. Or, or at least 
make, you know, generate targets that matter to sites so that they can um, kind of start, you start driving the right kind of behaviours from, from, from the management. Um, and, and, and going on to that, I mean, senior management at both the site level and, and um, more of the board is, is essential to, to kind of get anything kind of moving. Um, the next is a, a phased approach, which is what we would probably advocate in terms of um, managing the kind of expense of metering whilst um, demonstrating the benefits and delivering the savings. Um, when, when considering metering, always have a, a, a report, a reporting need or an API in mind. Um, don't just kind of uh, meet, uh, meet uh, in a kind of blank fashion. Um, data tech, uh, collection is always um, easy, fairly easy to scale up. Uh, that kind of aligns with our um, favorite. And the very last moment, um, thing is really about energy management. It's, it's behavioral activity. Um, what we've been talking about, metering and reporting systems are, are, are tools. And those are opportunities which, which we were able to identify and um, like to be able to identify uh, have, have used the, the metering data. But um, unless they were there looking and, and, and there was a desire to kind of inform these kind of areas, that they wouldn't have found, found those savings. So it, it, it needs to be kind of um, supported by an appropriate energy management structure um, to kind of really drive and sustain locking those savings. So that kind of concludes really what um, we, we had to say there. I apologize if there were some uh, te technical difficulties early on and structure to discuss. Um, can, you, can you all hear me? Great. So I now welcome any questions that you guys may have. Um, let's hear. Um, we've got a question here. How do you go about getting senior management buy-in? I think more for Andrew, perhaps. Sure. Um, difficult process. Uh, it was certainly slow in the beginning. I think the problem with a metering um, capital project as opposed to um, most kind of cost saving capital projects would be demonstrating the payback effectively all you're doing is buying meters you're not buying a piece of kit that will guarantee savings although uh, in our experience it did guarantee savings um, so there's a bit of a hurdle to get over what we did was um, go through self I suppose we introduced a system that um, other sites we had a standardized platform uh, which was fairly cheap to install and give us a standardized platform we then started sharing the information from that system and people started to get more interested in, in what this is showing from that we then said well the data is not great we really need to enhance this data and be able to get automated data which gives us um, better granularity we can um, break it down uh, much more and get the detail and at that point you start to get broad interest in terms of um, there's, there's capital that needs to be spent to increase the metering, um, but we could demonstrate the, some of the savings that were possible through some of the early sites. At that point, I've decided that we'd we'd trial things, so we chose a couple of sites that we'd pilot for um, much more detailed levels of sub-metering, and use those really rather than a rollout on every site to demonstrate that what was possible, and just made sure that we put in a lot of effort at those sites to. Um, return on on the investment they were making and obviously from that point it was blatantly obvious that this was going to deliver a return so uh, we were then able to to roll it out to the rest of the sites great thank you a, a question here from um somebody with an academic more of an academic back how did you manage to involve the workers at tulip who may not understand what these dashboards or graphs are are about okay so we I suppose we started small and built up. So I mentioned in the presentation we've got um, we forced effectively that we have an energy champion on each site, and those energy champions have to be an engineer, uh, which gives us an advantage of having somebody who has got an appreciation of, of what these issues are and, and what we're talking about. And initially, as part of the rollout, we trained those engineers, the energy champions, in the system, in the reports, in typical opportunities that they should be implementing on site. So those guys um, were on board to start with. They then act 
act as catalysts on site, I suppose, to be able to spread the word on what the reports um, mean, what they look like. But in terms of what the reports mean, they're, they're pretty simple. I mean, a lot of them can't get much more simple. They're red, amber, green. It's kind of red, bad, green, good. It's it's fairly simple. Um, so in terms of being able to get those um, into the kind of standardized production reports, that's what we're, we're working towards. That's what the ultimate aim is. So we don't talk about production and then stop and then talk about environment. We just talk about site KPIs. And in the site KPIs happens to be a couple of lines on energy management. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. This is a question coming from somebody within an energy role. Large number of sites, what advice is given to help in deciding what type of software that is available that would be suitable? Any key points to look out for? Um, I'll do a quincher and then palm it quickly off onto Andy, who's the expert. Um, I suppose when we started off, we did do uh, um, an exercise where we went through numerous suppliers of energy management software and we actually spoke to the carbon bust back which was probably five years ago now and got their advice as to who was the best which systems worked um who we should be at least entering the tender process and then obviously we did a tendering process and got down to uh, the final couple and decided to go with um verco in this instance i'm sure other consultants are available <laughs> Do you want to pick it up, Andy? Uh, well, I, I, I guess it's um, the, the, the key things to um, really consider is, is what outputs you need um, and uh, kind of uh, kind of flexibility you want going going forward. I mean, there's, there's a lot of platforms around, um, and they're, they're getting more and more by the by the kind of day. Um, it, it kind of it, it's yes, there's the reporting, but also um, it's the kind of support and implementation is, is quite important as well, I think. Um, having uh, people who understand um, the kind of needs of the site and or, or the group um, and are familiar with the drivers that kind of uh, drive certain kinds of behaviour and, and, and can kind of provide the kind of necessary training, etc. Uh, and kind of fit it into more of a kind of uh, energy management programme rather than just the software provision is, is probably something to consider as well. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. If you just want, if you just want mm. data analysis, ultimately you can do it on a spreadsheet. Um, and there's other systems out there that are fancy data analysis platforms or carbon reporting platforms. And if that's what you want, um, I think Andy's right. You've got to speak the system to what you actually need. But having a good understanding of what you need in the first place is pretty critical. Thank you. I have a question here from somebody from uh, Technology and Management, um, a company. And that is, in what situation would you use wireless connectivity for the metering? Uh, I'll, I'll pick this one up. Uh, it is. Uh, it can vary. Um, it's it generally when um, there's a lot of maybe water meters that are remote from any kind of um, site, so any kind of services, electrical supply, anything like that. That that's often a good uh, a good candidate for kind of. Um, a wireless transmitter, certainly if it's a kind of a batch charge one. Um, otherwise, uh, it really depends on, on on the site. Sometimes they can work out in a more cost-effective way. Sometimes they're more expensive. Um, it, it, it's very much dependent on on, on the kind of site. And also with wireless, you've got other considerations like the kind of site configuration in terms of its uh, how it's constructed and what kind of interference there might be, all those kind of things. But um, in certain kind of more remote applications. Um, you, you can get a. Uh, uh, it can be a good solution. Is it to say, Andy, that I, I think on some of our sites we've we've pushed to kind of get a wireless transmitter in to start with because okay, it's an upfront cost, but it it means that as you build monitoring um, number mm. meters on site down the track, it's easy to implement and, and add meters in. Yeah, the solution that you 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 guys have been in quite a lot is 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 very much um, uh, plug and play to a certain extent. It, it, it's, to, it's very easy to add an extra meter to. Um, there's, there's no uh, site to do it themselves, um, uh, and it's it's quite low cost. So that that that's in that particular solution is is, is probably why it's um it's good for that kind of uh, purpose. Great. Uh, oh, I just got one um, uh, question from one of the members. 
Is there any type of meters to be conscious about? Heat meters for RHI requirements, as an example. Um, we've had the most um, uh, not problems, but they're, 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 there's more scope for things to, uh, or, or you have to pay, be, be more with things, um, meters like condensate meters. Um, they, they, we've seemed to have failed quite often. It's not necessarily anything wrong with the um, meter technology. It's more maybe the applications that it's been put in um, and uh, the control of which on the system that we have and, or, or, or the site may have. And, um, and heat meters are probably another one. Um, a small um, inaccuracy in temperature, one of the temperatures will, will give you quite significant um, variation in, in kind of heat output. Um, so, so there are something that need probably a, a defined um, uh, program to, to ensure calibration and, and accuracy. Um, we, we'd be kind of uh, getting the root of the, the kind of more basic meters, if, if we can do so, the more reliable, robust ones. Um, uh, sometimes there's there's a there's a need for the more com uh, more either more complicated or uh, slightly more uh, potentially. Um, more potentials, but but we kind of have to put in a system that can manage the kind of patient and um, accuracy um, over time. Otherwise, it will just deteriorate. Okay, great. Um, I really want to wrap up, but I just got one more, and that would be our last question. And that is, how were all employees? Um, where she will be talking about the in energy champions communicated to and encouraged your efforts that your efforts that are given access to the data online or through, is it through uh, their intranet or given reports or similar? Um, it's a it's a big answer. Um, it's, we've obviously got 60 manufacturing sites. Things differ um, on different sites. Um, so the first thing, I suppose, is a quick appreciation of the system. So, yeah, the, the tool is an online tool. It's um, web-based, so effectively anybody can log in. Um, we can set up uh, permissions and reports so people are able to log in. Um, the reports we can also automate, so we can send automated email reports to whichever members of staff we like, um, whatever type of report we like, whether it's simple, complex, um, overview, detail, whatever we like, um, we're able to do that. Uh, so an email can arrive in their inbox on a, on a morning to tell them what yesterday's performance was. Most of the people who get those type of reports are senior managers and engineers who know what to do with the data. The challenge is obviously how we get that out to all employees. Um, and I think it's the same as kind of any communication to all employees. Um, you don't have to tell everybody everything. Um, there's a need to make sure that the information that you're passing on is relevant to the people people that you're giving it to. So depending on the application, um, not everybody needs to know every detail around your energy KPI, because in some cases they can't do much to alter it. So they only really need to know the information that is relevant to them that they can actually change and alter in their job role. So uh, if you're working on a production site, do you really need to see the overall energy KPI for the site to know whether you're doing your um, particular task or not, not particularly. So I suppose communication would come in other ways, um, whether it's, I suppose, from things like induction videos to, to show what we expect, or line level briefings um, to give specific information on uh, what we, behaviors that we'd like to see, so turning lines off at break time, that kind of thing. Um, or even we've developed, I suppose, a series of SOPs on um, not just risk reduction, but opportunities as well. So, um, in a fact, what are the typical things that, that staff can do to, to help with the program that's in place on their site? Uh, and there's no real one answer that fits all. It's um, trying to tailor it as much as possible to the particular site in question and, um, I suppose, the kind of the makeup of that site. Great, thank you. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much, Andy and Andrew, for joining with us. This webinar recording will be uploaded onto the 2 Degrees platform as well as the slides, and you'll receive an email shortly with this information. If there are any questions that you've asked and that Andy or Andrew did not get to, please utilize our platform and post it 
decision. Uh, we will get Andy or Andrew to um, comment on that after. So much, and I uh, hope you enjoyed today's webinar. Sorry for the technical difficulties, by the way. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thanks. Bye.